shows up, full of energy, yeah, great ideas. What's not to like? It's unbelievable. When can you pull Tyler up like that? Never, never. Very polite, educated, could hold a sentence together. What's not to trust? It's not bonding to anything. That's just ridiculous. We're looking at this every single day, wondering how am I going to fix this? How am I going to fix this? Oh yeah, baby. Mike Holmes. On the money. Quite the voyage, you know, for someone that just comes from another country that wants work done, that puts faith and trust in someone that is supposedly a professional. Susan and Tony bought the house within the last year, probably around seven, eight months ago. And the idea was, like normal, you come in, you buy a place, you get it ready for what you want to move into. Because we were under time pressure to get the house before school started, this house was actually empty, so we knew we could do a quick settlement, which we did, and um, went ahead in two weeks, which was great. And the house needed a lot of work, it needed a lot of updating. The contractor was kind enough to really bring them around to look at different homes, give them ideas of what he could do for them, uh, come highly recommended. He was very helpful, very personable. very personable, and we were delighted to have found a contractor so easily, someone that would help us. Tony, right, hi. Hi, come here. For the most part, in the beginning, he turned up on time, he kept showing up. The painting got started, the carpeting got done, um, and that seemed to go okay. You know, this really doesn't look bad from uh, walking in the front of the door. On first view, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks pretty decent, but um, as we progress down the hall, you'll see that things deteriorate pretty dramatically. Well, this is one whole lot of tile. This is right from the front door right through into the dining room. Yep. Closet, laundry room, bathroom. Is this how we finish bathrooms? I guess he was going to cover that up with a uh, corner room. The issues really started when the tiling started. The problems with him showing up started around that time also. I think the yeah. job was too much for him. And I think by that point, it was also all about the money. We don't have grout. I can also see right off that we've had grout repairs. We have. Um, yeah. The tiles in the middle here were very uneven. And um, we asked him to you know, redo them because they were so uneven. And obviously, you know, it was very difference. High difference, yes, high difference. And he showed up at the door. He was very upset. He said his mother had been sick. And of course, we were very sympathetic to that. And he said he would absolutely finish the job, whatever it would take to make us happy. And he did start to show up again. I like the black. I like the amount. And I can't believe how straight that line is down here. So we do see talent within laying tile. What's up with the kitchen? We started to install that ourselves. When we hired him, he was initially going to work with us on doing this, but as the relationship broke down, we decided we would go ahead and do it ourselves. Basically, we couldn't finish the, any of the cabinets until we had the floor finished. There's still tiles that were pulled out and grout that's not finished at the end, and it's not finished into the corners. What's yeah. the tape on the ceiling? <laughs> we were looking to put an island in here. This is for the island. And so that's just rough positioning, so that I had some idea of where, for those lights at the end, would line up with the island somehow. Okay, that shows you know how to plan ahead. This is not how to hold up a temporary sink. I'm pleased to see that we have a temporary sink here. The problem being with it is that he's anchored it into the windows. You're going to put dishes in there, you're going to fill it with water, and you're going to automatically lean against the counter. Yeah. I can't believe it hasn't snapped and come off. A uh, four-inch line on your hood is incorrect. You need a six-inch line on a microwave hood. Okay. Did you know that? I didn't. Okay, but you know, it's neat. This shows me you're doing it, and, and the tiles alone is not bad. However, oh my God, this is going to be a lot of work. I can tell by looking at that one area has already been touched up. It has, and it's also cracking if you step on the area over there, the, the grout actually cracks. In fact, this whole three or four tiles here, this is done separately at a different time, and the whole, all of this moves and cracks um, when you walk on it. He claimed that he's been in the business for 20 years. It shows in the work he's done, but what he doesn't understand, obviously, is old technology does not work with new minimum code requirement today. This is the method that was used 20 to 30 years ago. We're right down over the OSB, and they put down a metal mesh and then a scratch coat and tile over top of it. 20, 30 years ago, even 30, this was acceptable. Why? Because we had two by 10 for fuller choice, not two by eight. It all has to come up. I cannot fix it. I have to take this up, and I've got a huge problem here. That's removing that metal lath from the OSB. Mm. He should have beat that up. So he may have tiling skills, but he doesn't have new methods and understanding of why the structure will not support the tile. You're gonna to continue to see cracking. It's not gonna stop. Right. Uh, how did you get a hold of me? One day, Tony happened to be home and there was a big knock at the door and we were really devastated. It was the tile company. They were looking for the contractor because he had bounced the check for the tile. He bounced the check with the tile guy? Yes. Yeah, with the tile company. With the tile company. With and the uh, they, he had written our street name on the memo part of the check. They actually drove around to this street, saw a bin in the driveway, got out, took a look, looked inside the bin, 
Mmm, ceramic tile. We invited the tile guys in and they took a look at the job and it was at that point that they started to show things to us that were not correct. And they were great. They were so helpful. They were, you know, wonderful with us, telling us if we ever needed any help to contact them. So in a moment of madness, I called the tile company. I broke down crying on the phone with them and we started talking about things we could do to fix the tile. And they were laughing, saying it was a job for you. And little did we know, they contacted the, the Homes on Home show on our behalf. The supplier said, no matter what, if Mike doesn't do this, we're going to help you. They offered to supply all the product that we would need, and including the subflooring, um, to complete the job. Now this shows the people here, how good the people are. There is a difference in money still owing to the tile company. There was a 3000 and change difference owed to the contractors, so the homeowners paid the tile company. That's beautiful. You're out of pocket everything. Right. Pretty much, We yeah. paid for the tile twice. <laughs> okay. Do you know how much it's going to cost to pull this up and do uh, this right? Uh, lots. Lots. <laughs> Job's got to be redone as usual. Who is left holding the bag? The homeowners. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Just keep doing what you do. We'll be, we'll be smiling in no time. Okay, you thank you. Okay? Take it easy. Unbelievable. Now you know why we're here. I've, I've, I've actually pulled up carpet that was harder to pull up than this. Okay, don't you worry. We'll put that on the new floor for you. New kitchen. You'll be running around like it's just nothing. Thank you. Make it safe for you. It is a total shame that we have to pull all this tile up because it looks pretty good, but unfortunately, it's not going to work. It's never going to stay, and we're going to redo it. So we'll move everything plastic up here. I'll okay. start this way back. Move everything from here into this room here. Object A is all tile gone. Right now, the first piece came up, obviously, because it was not well bonded. It did not stick to the bottom. It was a dry mix, so if we get lucky, half of it will come up this way, the other half is going to be well secured. This is fairly stapled down. It did not bond to the OSB, it has not bonded to the tile. He's obviously used a non-modified thin set, so I have a feeling we're in for a lucky day. Good. Let's concentrate on the tile right now, okay? Okay, that that's going to raise that, so we'll wait off on that. Yeah, right, because it's not bonded to the floor, it came up. Right. There is a lot of black tile here from the front door to the very back of the kitchen. That is high maintenance. Let's compare it to a black vehicle. It's hard to keep clean. There was absolutely no way of repairing this. Not a chance in hell of repairing this because the grout would continue to crack on a monthly basis. The tiles would eventually loosen and snap up everywhere. They're coming up without even breaking. You can see all the characters from his trowel. It's his death. He troweled the floor, grabbed the tile, and just placed them down, placed them down, placed them down. He created a nice level surface with the thin set and just tile after tile. By the time he got to a certain area, it was dry. There was no pushing it in. There was no buttering effect. It makes it easier for me, but I shouldn't have to be doing this. Never in a million years would I believe it. <laughs> Never. I have never pulled it up that easy. This is my worry. See that? My biggest fear was to pull up the pin set. I knew the tile was going to come up fairly easy. I thought half and half. It's all coming up in full pieces. It's all non-modified. But if we have a poor surface, I'd use modified. We'd be in hell right now. This is going to come up so clean, you're not even going to think it was even tiled. That's incredible. But it goes to show certain ways of putting something down, such as tile here, does not work. He's definitely on a cross like this. Move this way back, that's what he's done. Wrong staples, wrong procedure, wrong pin set. This has taken 25 minutes. If this was placed right, we wouldn't even be out of the kitchen yet. Unbelievable. Make sure that we plastic off this area right around this tape to this area so if i have to do repairs it's minor repairs right around okay drape this whole area so it doesn't go upstairs we'll start sweeping from the kitchen this way nice and gentle we use our vacuums for the finer dust drop that plastic move the fridge move everything else out clear the base we'll pull all the base cabinets pull all the tile we are going to have an early day today guys pulled up 90% of the tile without breaking it or harming it. Impossible. Impossible. Every single one. Okay, let's make sure we vacuum out all the duct works. When we clean this place today, it's like we weren't even here. 
the baseboard in this neighborhood. Let's pull the drywall off the edge there. So it's more investigated today. I'll take everything down Thursday. Do whatever. Okay. Let's go. Plastic. Where we go? Save the tile. Take your time. Let's preserve every tile possible. It's almost like carpet, isn't it? This came up so easy. I've never in my life removed any type of tile or thin set without any problem. Really? This way. We saved 80% of the tile. Wow. And the only reason we threw out probably 20% because they were the cuts or it had a little bit of adhesive on it, we just threw it in the bin. It is incredibly shocking to be back in this original position again. We look at the kitchen and uh, I braced your cabinet just a little differently because that doesn't work for me, right? <laughs> the way it was hanging off the window. Right. This is secure. We've hooked your stove back up. We have some plastic on it right now and we'll take that off for you to reuse for tonight. Now, I want to definitely tile just out of front where we see the front entrance, okay? okay. I want to bring the exotic wood. I'm going to bring it right through into the dining room and we're we're going to start tiling again from the kitchen only. Okay. Now, we're going to change the color of tile and we're going to change the style of tile, right? Okay, yep. Okay, so uh, I'll confirm with you just on the tile. I won't confirm anything else. Okay. But I have to change this kitchen. All right. Okay, because I need to sleep at night. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? I, I understand what you were doing. You were trying very hard to finish it on your own because you ran out of money, and that's totally understandable to me, but uh, the design does not work for me, and I know what I can do with it, and I think it'll put a smile on your face. I'm going to pull down your ceiling. I'm going to pull down your bulkheads. I'm going to run the proper six-inch line that we need for the microwave hood. I'm going to re-drywall it, fix all the uh, unlevel list of the bulkheads, and I'm not going to tell you anything else from there. All right. Okay. Surprise. I have to surprise you. We are delighted to let Mike do things in here that we don't know about. Um, it will be amazing to actually have a house that we can live in and enjoy. You it notice we did have water issues, right. and that should okay. address right away. We will fix this. We have okay. it on both sides now that I've uh, okay. opened it up. Okay. I'm happy that it came up easy and, and makes it easier for me to fix it. This right. was my biggest scare was getting up the thin set, but we just peeled it up like carpet. It right. was ridiculous. Oh, that's unbelievable. It's Very dry mix, wrong thin set, wrong procedures, uh, but good for us because it came up easier. Bad for you, you should right. pay twice. For now, you can use everything you need to use. We'll come in and out. We'll create all the subfloors that we need to do for tile. Once I've gotten to a certain stage, I will block off the kitchen and you're out of luck for a couple of days. Okay, I can live with it. It's been a nightmare. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but at least we know there's going to be an end to it now. That's it. Okay. I'll be back. Thank you very, very much. We should not be using any type of metal mesh on the floor with Vincent. We call it scratch coat. It doesn't work anymore. We have to beef it up. We have products we can use. We can use a concrete board, wonder board. There's many different types. Hardy board, they all work because we thin set that down, we screw it down, and it gives us a much stronger floor. Bring another hair. That's it. So you're the man, you're Ton. You're the one that uh, saves people, eh? Another one out there. I really love to hear that. I think that's very uh, well, admirable to, uh, that you do this. It's, uh, you, you stand up to the plate and say, hey, we're going to help this family. Yeah, the customer was unhappy, so it's not good for our industry, I think. So we, we shoot out. So we did. Now the homeowners made a valiant attempt here. They got all their lighting where we want, but this is what you call a retrofit pot light. Nothing really wrong with it. But uh, I want to see what's going on in the ceiling anyway. So just pop all these pot lights down. So. I want porcelain at the front door. I want to do uh, probably an exotic wood right through, wrapped around the stairs. I would love to do an inlay right here. This has character in it, right? It almost looks like an old, new look. It's a hand script. Right. And this is what's drawn my eyes to everything. You know, when I see the standard that everybody likes, even though it's a high quality wood, we are talking high quality, I'm seeing character. individuals who actually have scrapers and by hand they they scrape it off and then it's finished Danny, how's this getting started man i'm sold excellent they have a new kitchen in here they're not allowed back in here from the front door to this point we chalk a line oh okay we we've actually maintained square from the uh, front entrance from the foyer through to here we're gonna have the same line like mike wanted have the detra go square with the structure that way when we're tiling we can just follow a line in the membrane uh knowing that that's bang on and square and we carried it right from the front about 50 feet or whatever this is to the back wall so now we're set square ready to lay detra square to the structure which will just enable us to do a lot more of a square finished tile job which is what we want so this will be the first run of detra which everything will square off of so this one is important and once we lay this down we'll We'll plot out the rest both ways off of that, and uh, a lot of square footage here. Okay, let's go. Look at this thing, Bob. It's a toolbox. Oh, I'll be damned. 
Have you seen this? There's a, uh, there's a bed in here. I'm going to go in the bed. Is there a bed in here? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a bunk in the back. Oh, it opens up like this, can you imagine? You got to bring Tyler to Timbuktu, and then you can just take a nap when you get tired. I like that. Made straight out standard stone tile. Generally, I prefer the 45, but if the floor is not flat. You mean this way? Yeah, diamond pattern? Not diamond. Um, if the floor is not flat because it's such a large tile, before long you're trying to build up with inset. And I can determine where our humps are, and yeah. uh, if it's just the one, we can do our join there, right? Yes, yeah. that's not an issue. So right. turn it on the uh, diamond pattern, which I think we have the layout for, and I, I really think it would work in here. And the only other thing you could do is do a combination pattern with the 20 by 20 and the 13 by 13. Um, which would give you a cobblestone look. That would be uh, like that. That would be a little bit easier than the 45. Um, and again, same idea. If the walls are out of, if the walls are out of square, you've got a big piece, smaller piece, big piece, smaller piece. I like it. I like it. I like it. Sold. This is the original kitchen pipe coming down. Because it's going across the wall upstairs, uh, and the dishwasher's going to go there. We got to reroute it around on the other side. I'm just going to cut it down here. Look at this. Oh, this is all this black area is where some. Plumber, I'm assuming, or homeowner in the past almost burnt the house down there trying to solder one of these fittings up here. It's unbelievable. Cut fire here, cut fire here, cut fire here, cut fire here, and then he tried to put it out with some this coffee. <laughs> it looks like coffee. Brett and Ron just showed up, bring us some more uh, Dietra, and are just giving us a hand here helping out. Right now we're just building up this edge a little higher because we have a couple humps in the floor. Start from this point, get our trim up, and then we'll start from our trim over. Twice. Twice. What did you just spray over that? It's the aerosol hairspray. Hairspray. Yeah. Non-scented. Non-scented. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's to keep the line there. Yep. Yeah. More out. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, come over here and just tag that down, please. Okay. Now, this is the impressive part. He cuts a porcelain tile, he takes a diamond sponge, and he cleans the edge so we get an edge similar to the one that's here. Just a nice clean edge, I can't cut myself. It's going to go nicely against the uh, trim here that we've put in place. Very happy. You see the pattern start to form. Oh, oh I love it. Each small tile surrounded by four big tiles and vice versa. I love it. Big tiles surrounded by four small tiles. Porcelain definitely has to be dried because otherwise you get what's called a water bond. Uh, and the tile will just pop loose. You can have perfect coverage, but there'll be water separating it. Um, and that's not good. That's perfect, Ron. I mean perfect. Good. And you did that one out of level. Perfect. Still in the cabinets. You guys have been working really hard. All new drywall built out the bulkhead on top up here, making sure that the fridge will sit in place and that we have an equal distance out on both sides. Because as the cabinets go up, we'll have crown molding, so that has to equal all the way around. And of course, Sean leveled that. Way to go. I can see it right away. Because this was something that annoyed me. It was out a half an inch, and you would see it as the fridge sits in place and comes out. If the fridge is level, something's going to look on level. raising it up because we have original nosing. It's already curved. It's probably the same color as the floor, very close to it. So uh, take all this off, raise the nosing, cut the pickets, another three eighths, and uh, that way it's pretty. 
Now, who is going to go to the care that you just did to do that? As a matter of fact, you know, even I was looking for a different angle. Do we put in a piece of, you know, a quarter round and mold it to fit the round area? This was the smartest way of doing it. I really like it. I'll never forget it. It's usually the way we do it because you, you run into height differences and also you run into height differences at the nosing and how you tie it in and just ends up looking like crap if you do it the other way. Look at that. At the beginning, when I first walked in, I saw the tile. And one of the first things I noticed, besides the length of the tile, was they had an area carpet at the bottom of the stairs. It was a funky one. It looked pretty good. In my mind, I saw replacing the area carpet with this. It's just sort of on the third one. It doesn't work there for me. So we started putting together the layout before the floor went in, what were we going to use as a tile, how were we going to match the front to the kitchen. Brent introduced these three pieces of tile. Unless just I visually looked at it, and I said, this is the ticket. Unless I draw four. <laughs> Stick with my original thought. Oh, you know what? That, that's starting to work. This works for me. Oh, this is nice. That just stands right out. Oh, look at that. That is exciting. I'm happy. Cool. Thank you. Then as we cut the difference up the pickets, the difference that we raised the nosing, we've uh, drilled little holes here, and we're actually redoweling them, so that way, once we put it into the, uh, the banister, it becomes one solid piece again, instead of just tacking it with a couple of finishing nails. So it's as good as new. It's not too often I can meet someone that can cut a circle of the table saw. <laughs> Look at that fit. It'll be a nice surprise if we block it off for because it seems so far she's been tempted to uh, come in here and, you know, people start thinking too much. It's not good. Well, we have uh, the guys just doing the plastering touch-ups. Chris is laying the floor. It's looking pretty damn good. Unfortunately, we're unable to cover it up and keep it away from the homeowner, which kind of bothers me, but uh, he was here on the weekend and they were home. As long as they don't see the inlay, but it gives them an idea of what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep them calm because they are slightly... Uh, Full of anxiety. Okay, wonder what's happened to the house. The dust. Well, it's looking good. The cabinet guys will be back. Unfortunately, the gable is a special order here for the fridge. Uh, now that we have them in place, we can really see the layout. It works out wonderful. We have the drawers on the island for pots and pans, so this is really good workstation in this area here. Crown moldings up, it's looking really good. We have some of the light balance up, so Frank will be back in soon, and we'll make sure we get our lights in underneath. We've had uh, Brian and Gary come in on the weekend and they moved that gas line for us. Gotta love those guys. The lights work out perfect. It appears right now they're off center, but they're not because the island will overhang about uh, 14 inches on this side. Again, on that side, that's the lights will be absolutely perfectly set over the island. Hey, it's coming. You know, this is a lot of work. It's not like we can do this overnight. This is a lot of work, a lot of tiling, a lot of setup, a lot of plastering, a lot of fixing. What I'm gonna do now is I need to make a template for this curve here. So what I do is I actually lay it on, the, on top of the floor, tape it down, trace the uh, curve, transfer it to one of the boards, and then proceed to just cut it right out. In the old days, with the old side strapping one by eight subfloors, they would use tar paper, similar to what they use on a roof, uh, to give you a vapor barrier to the basement. Once there, you'd need it, right? But in modern houses where they're sealed top to bottom, you really don't need a barrier of any sort. The only real purpose with uh, wax paper is it helps to kick the floor uh, boards together when we're nailing. They say it's a vapor barrier, but really, if you got 10,000 holes through, what kind of a barrier is it? We're doing about 400 square feet here, so I don't want my grout to be too hard or too soft. That looks good, actually. So now we'll just take this inside and let it sit for uh, 10 minutes. You should always let your grout flake up for 10 minutes and then go to grouting. This is a little sequence we call the brother's grout. Imagine going through this since, man, we're talking, oh, well, five months now. So you're without a kitchen. Everything's done, pulled apart, new carpets, tiles down, trying to finish the kitchen, and then we come in and take it all up. Turn their house upside down. We give them a room to live in with the fridge and stove actually in the living room. But, I mean, I understand the frustration, so that's why I call it divorce dust. But we come in, we do it right, and we do it quickly. She's got she's got a little baby here. There's dust in the air. Would have been nice had they have left the house. 
But if it was done right in the first place, I wouldn't be here. What? No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. That's right. So we're a little bit uh, deep here with the flange. So I'm just going to use another gasket and longer bolts. Within an inch below the tile, if you use two wax gaskets, you're fine. Welcome back. Thanks. Good Ready to do you. another countertop for us? You bet. Since I like the other one so much. You know what? This looks really good. It's a nice color. It is. It looks like the real thing. If you look at it, I mean, right away, at the beginning, you're going to say it's an odd color. But through all the coordination of the tile, what we're going to do on the backslide, the color of the kitchen and the maple, I think it's a perfect, perfect fit. Look at that. Beautiful. The reason why this is being put together now is because the two legs are over 60 inches, and 60 inches is the maximum length that we can ship on the truck. If they try and squeeze it in, it's tilting and it's banging around, and the miter glued at the factory could break open or the whole countertop could break. So when they're these lengths, it's a good idea to glue them on site. Once the countertop is all screwed in, the glue is still curing, and then it makes a really nice tight seal. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Perfect. Get out of the way. Well, I'm almost done the inlay. <laughs> Just gonna first lay this out, and I'm gonna determine my height difference, my layout. I'm gonna take my time on this now, so that when I go to lay it, I'm perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'd rather be perfect now, so that when I am ready with thin set, I know exactly how to lay it. We measured everything out. So for the flooring, because everything had to start at this point. If you're going to inlay, that's where your flooring starts. You can see this one-inch strip that he's created. He's ripped this down and created a border around the floor, designed perfectly from plank to plank, removing one, two, three, four, five, six planks. So planning ahead in detail allows me to finish. Beautiful. It's a type of limestone in the center here, and we will enhance this when we're done. The porcelain we do not have to enhance. We will, once everything's set in place, we will grout everything, and then we will enhance, make sure we keep this clean. You have a choice of enhancing it first and then grouting, or grout it, clean it really well so it doesn't absorb into the porous stone. It's not heavily duty porous, but it is porous. And then we'll put an enhancer on this, which will actually darken this to the shade of the tile. The enhancer, we can see nice dark tiles within, light tiles, which I really like. By putting in the enhancer, all it's going to do is Really, if I take and wet that tile, you start to see a little bit of character in it. That's what it'll do. It's really, it just makes it look wet. What I'm going to do is put all three medallions in place first, then I'll get the deeper and I'll cut strips on the outside edge in between where all the six by six are going because our thickness is you're staying at three quarter inch and we should have the deeper down and then the tile. That way we can set it easier and help the build up with it. It'll also serve as strength beneath it. Under here, I don't need it due to the mesh and everything else with it, the concrete board that we have down. But more than anything, I want the buildup. That's why we'll use the teacher on the outside. One thing I've learned is that quality is hard. I'm not just going to throw it down. I'm going to make it perfect. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, look at that. Can you see that? That is fabulous. We're up here, looking down. What do you see? Well, we got uh, everyone in today. The cabinet guy's finishing up. Looks beautiful. Countertop's on. We can see the overhang on this side, which allows a couple of bar stools. Overhang on this side, which allows a bar stool. Because you know what? The kitchen's always an entertainment area where people tend to stay. I think more people are in the kitchen than they are in the living room, if you think about it. Little things you do that make a huge difference for look. Independent lighting, so we have lighting under the cabinets. Plumbing, electrical, the glass doors, glass door in the corner, which breaks that cabinet look. It's really nice. Hardwood. Tile backsplash. This is such a gorgeous tile. Again, porcelain. The mosaic. The countdown begins. That's a whole lot of work to make that look the way it does because now we're having tile meet wood. We do not want to grout this because this area will crack like crazy. It's just two separate substrates that are going to move. So we have a siliconized sand that matches the grout. We will clean this out. We will bead this across. It will look like grout, but it, it creates a flexible joint, much like an expansion joint. These are things we need to know when doing this because this way, this will always look gorgeous, and that's the idea. That's fabulous, and look how well it stands out with the floor. We choose the dark floor, right? Beautiful dark floor. We'll shine this up later on. Nice. The last couple of houses, we've uh, we've kind of been going non-traditional with the color scheme. Mike's been selecting. Uh, a richer tone for the trim and ceilings. We're matching the trim with the ceilings, so it, it looks really nice and it warms the room up.
can't wait to actually see it cleaned up, you know, all the paper off. Yeah, what's the hardwood? Very nice. Sure beats 12 by 24 sleep. Good job. Thank you, you too, buddy. Want a coffee? I love coffee. I'll get you a coffee. You're gonna get me? I'll get you a coffee. Oh my goodness. He's not really getting me a coffee, is he? That's your coffee, as promised. Thank you very much, Michael. You're welcome. Well, just like every day. Yeah, 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 it is. All hands on deck. We're doing everything together. What did you do? Put this on with your players? By hand? Did you just take that off? Yeah. I loosened it. Okay, I'm kind of short, so you're going to have to take a look at it. I would say that's... <laughs> right. Onward. This is my problem. Every once in a while in my business, in my world, I fall across the best of the best, the pros. Step them out of their house back. I was here because of a tile company that recommended me to the homeowners. They're here. You ready? We're ready. Come on home. Oh, wow. I'm going to give your oh, house back. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We put a little surprise in the middle of the floor for you. Wow. That yes. is awesome. You like it? I love it. Yeah, totally cool. <laughs> it is really cool. This tile company cared so much, they stepped up to the plate big time. It's it is nothing, nothing that we could ever have imagined. There's nothing show us Well, I'll it tell is. you, I saw the carpet you had when I first came in, and it was an area carpet, right? So right. remember I said, yeah. let's put tile at the front door to save the floor, let's yep. go wood. And the idea for me was that I saw the area carpet, let's give you something that works here. Like, it draws your eyes to it right away. Oh, absolutely. Sort of it is absolutely spectacular. I've never seen anything so beautifully done in a residential home. They gave us the tile, they stepped forward on all the adhesion, all the thin set, everything else that we needed. Whatever you need, Mike, you got. We did a lot of touch-ups with trim, obviously, put in all new quarter round. We had to cut your doors down once we fit all the floor through. Your bathroom is now complete. It has been taken apart and put right back together again. And I, well, it's brand new again. I took away your full finish on the ceiling. I don't know. Thank you very much. It wasn't ours. <laughs> oh, dear. It was truly about someone who cared about the homeowner. I was blown away by this company, I'll be honest. Uh, I've never seen anybody stand up to the plate like this and say, hey, not only do I want to give you whatever you want, we want to come help you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <gasps> wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Quite a difference. Oh, it's quite a difference. <laughs> well, I said the layout didn't work for me. Right. Okay? And right. why it didn't work is we had the new angle, we had the pantry in the corner, and the fridge was totally in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually moved your stove over to the left. We actually had to move your gas line. We moved your fridge. We took your complete kitchen apart when it comes to electrical because there was a lot of things with the electrical that would not have passed code. Okay. Not to say that you did it, okay, because there was actually more work beyond what you did. Okay. I know you wanted granite, so I chose a look that looks like granite. Okay. It looks great. It looks great. It's unbelievable to go from what we lived with for so long to something that is so polished. For months and months, they've been living in dismay. They have been living in dust. They've been living without a kitchen, and they got she's got a baby she's taken care of. I understand what's happened to this family. In all depths, this would be you know, just to relax or think about, you know, settling in a house. Doing something different instead of thinking about the mess and how we were going to get out of it. It's amazing. I love the lights. That's, you love the lights? Yeah, I love the lights. I thought I was going to miss the 147 pot lights, but... Uh... <laughs> the pot lights work, okay? But it wasn't quite with the design based on the cabinets. What you're going to find is you're going to be shadowed over the counters. Right. So that's why I removed them and I put in choice lighting. And you notice we reduced the cabinet. Yeah. We gave new glass mm -hmm. with lights inside the cabinets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed, but I got you a new dishwasher. <gasps> you did get us a new dishwasher. Fantastic. Well, everything's stainless steel. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, was... I couldn't put in the black one. No. If you notice what I did here, the idea for if you were to look at the angle, everything continues down, as in a full tile, right? right. Yeah. 20 by 20 tile, you see it looking down. This has all been reinforced to take this load. We've put in all the right products. You're never going to see this break. You're never going to see it crack again. And it kind of looks bigger, doesn't it? It does. And I think the layout of the tile has just enhanced the beauty of the tile. It's stunning. It really is stunning. I don't know. It works. It works. It works because you're taking the fridge away, and that is really attractive. It definitely works. It really is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you so Thank you so, so much. Oh, I can't believe it. By the end of it, all's good. Again, reminds me why I keep doing what I do. Thank you for your it patience. Makes a difference. It you. just makes such a difference. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> oh, you, know you forgot something. Maybe you want to stay here, right? Eh? I think people don't, don't realize how 
depressing it can be to live in that mess. And I don't think these contractors think about that when they are doing whatever they do, not finishing jobs. But to have Mike's crew come in was just amazing. They were professional and they came every day and they worked their butts off and we have to thank them. It's amazing. Is it good? Give me five. How about ten? So good. <laughs> See you, guys. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye-bye. Keep smiling. Bye-bye. Thank you, See Mike. You, Paul. Thank you. Take care. You too. We never ask for anything. We are very independent people. And the amount of generosity that people have shown is just astonishing to us. It's, um, it's just beautiful. Were you going to have an island in your kitchen? I was. Yes, it was on the ceiling. With 147 spotlights all around. Mood lighting. Mood lighting. Well, we need some mood. <laughs> yeah, mood lighting. Very nice. As we said yesterday, Mike, right? right? When I make a mistake, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time working for you. Well, and it was fun trying to hide stuff with you from here. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, and I tell you, you stapled those cloths in so tight last night. <laughs> I had no chance. <laughs> I, you know, I knew you were fine. <laughs> I, I even <laughs> take a drop off. Oh, I got the cat could still get it, and I was going to put a mini cam on his head so I could see what was going on. <laughs>